Meta, formerly known as Facebook, is up almost 20% over the last hour or so. And now it's up actually 70% from those lows back in November of 2022, which was just a couple of months ago where the stock bottomed, signifying the mass optimism behind this business, which now puts them at a market cap of 400 billion and a PE of just less than 15. So now it's time to analyze their year ending earnings results so that us value investors can get a good idea of where things stand with Meta and whether it's a buy, whether it's a sell at these current levels now that the bottom is in and the stock is ripping higher. So make sure to stick around to the end of the video as we'll answer all those questions and more. How's it going? Welcome to Everything Investing. I hope you're having a great day today. As always, we'll go through the usual, the fundamentals of the business. We'll talk about the trajectory of this business. We'll take everything into consideration. And finally, we'll come here to our intrinsic value calculator to see the margin of safety buying points for this business here, ultimately concluding off our video by discussing our investment rating for Meta. So if you like this content, make sure to like the video, subscribe as it always helps out. And don't forget to comment your thoughts in the comment section below. Without further ado, Let's jump into the video. All right, so it's February 1st. It's time to discuss Meta's Q4 2022 earnings. And well, what did we see from this result? Well, they missed on their earnings expectations here, just slightly here by about 50 cents, coming in at about a dollar and 76 cents. They did beat on those top line expectations there by about $500 million worth. And that's why shares actually got sent higher. Not only that, they did also mention they are committing to about a $40 billion buyback program here for this business and their shares. On top of that, they did see increases across their daily and monthly active users. We'll talk more about that in just a second. And first, let's look at their segment results, of course, denoted in millions of US dollars. If we look at this Q4, of course, this business's revenues are primarily produced from their advertising. So that comes from their family of apps there, you know, $31.4 billion worth of revenues there. And then they had the Reality Lab segment here, another $700 million worth there came in for a total of $32 billion. Now, if we compare this over the last few quarters and over the last year, a very strong Q4. Now, what you will notice with this business is that every Q4 that comes around, you will see some nice fundamental results results at least in Q4 and then you know it tapers off a little bit from Q1 into Q2 so after we deduct for expenses we're left with about 10.6 billion dollars in operating income there reality labs they're still losing on that side of the business and so that's a four billion dollar drawdown there ultimately leaves them with 6.3 billion dollars for this quarter at least in terms of operating income that puts them back at a 20% operating margin. If you compare that over the last few quarters, you can actually see that their operating margins have been hit pretty hard, you know, up from 46% back at the end of 2020 down to just 20% now. So, so, you know, a decent margin contraction there, not a great thing for investors to see. But if we take a look at this chart here from Main Street Financial Data, the first link in the description and today's video sponsor, if we look at their global active users here, you can see these have been on the increase, you know, over the last few years, really. And considering Meta is a business that does derive majority of the revenues from advertising. Obviously, the more users that they have on their platform on a daily and monthly basis is going to improve their fundamentals. So you're going to want to see that in the future as well. Now, now what you're going to want to pay attention to as an investor here is their reality lab segment. As you can see, revenues have been increasing steadily to a degree, at least over the last few years. However, their operating income here is on the decline and growing more steadily, you know, so now they're at, you know, impacts of about $13 billion on their operating income. And so you're really going to want to see how this part of the business here transitions over the next few years because if they can shift to profitability this business is really going to take off here now the other thing to watch here is their operating expenses they do spend quite a bit on operating expenses especially with regards to their research and development sales and marketing when you do have a new segment that is trying to gain a foothold if we look at their costs and expenses here just operating cost is about 60 billion dollars we'll talk more about what they spend on in just a little bit but if we look at their margins we've also seen this has been on the decline over the last few years as well again we talked about that at the top of the video, but another thing for investors to watch. Now, if we look at this from a consolidated statement of income perspective, again, $32 billion in revenue for this quarter. If we look at this from a 12 month perspective, they came in with $116 billion worth of revenues. You know, if we compare that to last year's results, that's relatively flat. It is down just slightly on a year over year basis. And so that might make you wonder why is the business up 20% after hours when revenues are down, you know, costs as well. If you add these all up came in at a total of $87 billion worth for this year. Last year was only at 71 billion dollars you know it leaves them with operating income here of just less than 30 billion dollars you know 29 billion dollars you could call it off of 46 billion dollars last year you know a massive hit to operating income and well it's really because of the outlook of this business they do have a solid cash position here 
you know, of about $40 billion, let's call it, of cash on the balance sheet in comparison to just about $10 billion worth of debt. So a very healthy liquidity position. Now, if you take a look at their cash flows here for this quarter, they produced $5 billion worth of free cash flow for the full year. They had about $18 billion worth of free cash flows, you know, down about $20 billion from last year. So again, free cash flows have been hit here, especially from a cash from operating the business perspective down about $7 billion. They were spending massively this year, you know, up to $31 billion in investments in growth and sustaining this business, ultimately leaving them with that $18 billion figure there in free cash flows. Now, what do they do with those free cash flows to reward shareholders? Well, if you take a look down here, all you can really see here is they're really committed to repurchasing those shares. They repurchased about $30 billion worth for this year, and they ended up taking on a little bit of debt here as well. But other than that, that's what you can expect as an investor because they do not pay a dividend and they don't really have a lot of debt to pay down either. Now, in terms of an outlook, if we look at the outlook provided by the CFO here, we can see that they're expecting revenues for at least for the next quarter to come in at around $27 billion or so, you know, that does include some Forex impacts there. Expenses for the full year, they're expecting to actually grow from this year's $87 billion to up to $95 billion potentially, still lower than what they had initially expected over the last few years. They're also expecting their capital expenditures to stay in the same kind of range that they're at right now. That is also gonna be down from what they had initially expected. So those are some good things there, lowering their costs, cutting down on costs, and hopefully we'll see that increase to their top and bottom line as a result, okay? That ultimately brings us down to our operating income segment here where for this year they came in with a total of 28 billion dollars worth of operating income again last year 46 billion so we had about a 20 billion dollar hit there now that does bring us lower than our 2020 levels there but we're going to want to see if we can see a rebound here in those top and bottom line results especially on those cuts to their cost that they're expecting now if we expect that they will be able to lower their cost over the next few years while also simultaneously improving their fundamentals if we require a 10 percent return they do not currently pay dividend if we think that by the end of 2023 they can come out with about 30 billion dollars worth of operating income and that that can grow at about eight percent over the next five years on an initial slower economy then that grows at about 15 percent for the five to ten years after that on a 14 pe like they're currently trading at the stock would actually be worth about 202 dollars so a 50 dollar increase from where we are currently you know over the last few years they have high revenue and earnings per share growth rates so if we estimate that they can't even achieve those but they can come in somewhere close to that at 20 percent for the next five years a nice solid rebound in the economy their fundamentals massively improve they're able to get things like their reality lab segment off the ground and running you know then that decreases down to about a 14 percent growth rate for them for the five years after that on a 20 pe the stock would absolutely balloon up to almost 500 dollars per share now in the very worst case scenario here let's anticipate that this business does have further challenges ahead you know we see negative one percent growth over the next five years Finally, Reality Labs is finally getting off the ground. It's finally getting running. They have more daily active and monthly active users producing more revenues from their advertising, et cetera. They're able to grow out 10% for the five years after that on just a 10 PE, the stock would be worth about $78 per share. Of course, that is a very conservative estimate here, you know, of course, in our worst case scenario. But if we bump that up to just like 5% growth, you can see how that does change our valuations a little bit up to over $100 at least in the worst case scenario. But if we look at where this stock was just less than a year ago, you know, honestly, just less than a few months ago, the stock was at $90 per share, you know, in that margin of safety investment territory. And it's absolutely rebounded 70% from those levels, which means this is a valid margin of safety level down here at, a, you know, around $100 per share. So now that we have, you know, increased 70% from those levels, that does change our investment rating where it was probably an eight or so, you know, down at these levels, I'd say our investment rating at this current point is about a six and a half. And why do I say a six and a half? Well, it's a few things. Okay, we've seen this business absolutely fall from its meteoric rise up to 76%. And that's because it switched from being a growth stock to more of a value stock here and they really have been changing their business model with the introduction of reality labs into the business again that is also something that is eating up a bunch of those operating income and the bottom line there so again the investment thesis is really if you believe reality labs will eventually turn profitable if you believe they can cut down on those costs improve their margins improve their fundamentals and get back to kind of where they used to be this business can really take off and be back up north of 200 dollars per share where you would see some nice stock appreciation you know after hours we're actually up to 183 dollars now after that 19 percent increase increase, which goes to show that Wall Street and a lot of investors are of that thought process there. But if you take a more pessimistic approach to investing, you don't think that it will be such a smooth transition for Reality Labs. You know, we're going to see more hardship ahead. Maybe we'll see more competition in this business. Then yeah, you probably wouldn't want to buy shares up at, you know, 150. You probably want to stick in around that margin of safety level where it was just a few months ago and absolutely bounced off of. With all that being said, that's the analysis for today's video. If you enjoyed it to this point, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. 
below and start a discussion there. But with that, I'll catch you on the next one.